Hey, how you doing? Hey, welcome to uh, a leader games. Uh, not a not a not, not a regular not your regularly scheduled Tuesday design stream. A differently scheduled Tuesday design stream. Oh, I should retweet it. I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, this, sure. this is good. This is good. Uh, this is how the sausage gets made. You know. I should re exit. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um. Oh, we. Uh, I'll just pull it up on my phone. Here. We'll just both go on our phones for our the first minute of for the chatting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. No worries. Oh, we got it. So uh, it's gloomy day here in St. Paul. Yeah, very. How are you, how are you feeling about that? Um, it's really rainy. I don't know. It's a it's a, it's a glum one. It's a glum one. Yeah, but it's, we should be okay. I like walking around in this weather. Yeah, when properly protected. But it's it may be a little bit too heavy though. But, yeah, no, yeah. it's uh, it's it's October. You can tell. Um, Finally, all, all of my I had to do the like third falling of my tree. I have a giant ash tree mm. in my backyard mm. and it uh, there's a lot, a lot of leaves to put on there. Um, I yeah. just hired a guy to come and do it. Yeah, that's, you know, I'll, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> I'm still young enough. I gotta try to, I gotta try to do it while I can. But that's, that's where it's approaching for shoveling last year was when we had those record, the record setting shovels was when I was like, maybe uh, I don't maybe, need to be doing maybe, this. Maybe. I don't need to be breaking records. Um, have, you, I shoveled. have you turned off the exterior hose yet, though? Yes, I did okay, actually yes, do that. I haven't done that yet. That's so. good. That is the true Minnesota question. Minnesotans yeah. watching, I think this is your last weekend to turn off the exterior hose. Or else it's so. Yeah, come back in. I had that happen once, and it really was not that bad. I just heated it up and then turned it on, and it was fine. So, but anyway, this is good. This is great. This, this is what they come for. This is what they come for. This is what they come for. The, the homeownership. Yeah, the, the homeownership. Home so, what's your mortgage rate? I'm just no. dumb. Oh, there, just teasing now. <laughs> um, I always, I always joke that once you hit forty, you talk about interest rates at parties. Oh, no, sure. That's what you do. Uh, all right. Well, uh, what? Have you been? Oh, oh, somebody commented on the Crom sweater. Oh. Yeah, I like their art. They do cool stuff. Um, yeah, we should get some absolutely gripping content. <laughs> we should get some. Uh, who said absolutely gripping it content? It was Brooke. Brooke's it was being, Brooke. Brooke's Hi, Brooke. Being snide. Brooke's being mean to me. <laughs> Uh, we should get some Ahoy ships, maybe, for the... Oh, that'd be fun, some big ones, maybe. I could at least make a fin. I mean, Surely a giant fin to I go back there. I think Brandy would be really into... My spouse would be really into the time required to, <laughs> to paint those again, so... Uh, all right, so uh, what have you been playing there, Nick? Um, what have I been playing? Um, board game-wise, um, yeah. my copy of Unmatched Adventures showed up, Tales to Amaze. The co-op one. The co-op one. How is it? Uh, it's neat. I like it. I think... Um, I, I say as if you could say anything bad on air about another no, game. Stop. Yeah, we've done it. <laughs> yeah. um, no, no, I'll, but here, I'll start with the stuff I don't like about the original. Uh, uh-huh. I think I learned that um, I'm either really bad at Unmatched uh-huh. or uh, don't know how to play it good, like, uh-huh. period. Oh, sure. um, it's because when, I don't know, I have, I've bought a lot of the sets. I'm a, I'll say I'm one of the people who's, like, a big sucker for the Unmatched gimmick. I love, I like Smash Bros. I like the yeah. idea of, like, yeah. I'm sure a vampire hunter versus the thing. Um... But whenever I would play competitive with somebody, it was just this, like, oh, you got up, you're winning, and now, I don't know, it just always turned into a, like, I'm just standing on top of you, beating you, you, like, run away, hit me back. Yeah. Uh, a little bit just too much of just trading, bashing. Um, so the co-op one, I think, is really nice, because it lets you kind of, you like... deal with that. Yeah, and it lets you, like, explore the characters more, which mm-hmm. is where I think the strength is, because you don't just have... You're like the person, other person's foot is on your neck. Yeah. Where it's like, nope, you just need to defend or else you're going to die. You right. can be like, I don't know, I'm going to like wait around and try to like draw better cards. And like, you deal, you can tank damage for right now and I'm going to like just go, sure, just sure, go sure. run around and, you know, uh, maneuver multiple times to just like get up my hand size and stuff. So it was a lot about like trading aggro um, mm-hmm. with the AI uh, that I thought was neat. And I do think it will, the thing that they are so, so smart for certainly is the like, it's gonna make me bust out my old unmatched sets yeah. way more than I did already. Like I, I you know, generally. Can you play T Rex in the old yeah, sets? So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you can bring anything over. I think so. Like I was like, you know, I've played a lot of my other ones. You know, one or two times I've played oh, a little Red Bay of Wolf. You know, two, three times or something. But yeah. I'm like, well, now I wanna, yeah, I wanna throw them all against the against the monsters. The monsters. Yeah, so. I like the idea that the T Rex is like, it's my job to eat the humans. Yeah. I need to rise up to the occasion and defend yeah. planet Earth from these aliens. I want to see somebody make, uh, I'm sure somebody already has, but I want to see somebody make a fan deck for to play as the Mothman or the Martians as a mm-hmm. fighter. It seems like not that. It's like right there. You know, it's like 
nearly. I'm surprised they didn't do it. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah I bet you they, maybe they've got it in the pipeline, I feel like. Justin, <laughs> Justin if you're watching, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. That's a cool <laughs> idea. Um, I doubt Justin's watching. He's a pretty busy guy. So, um, so I... Uh, I've been playing. Oh, you've been playing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, oh, yeah, I'm just uh, sleepy today. No, it's all good. I, well, I should have jumped in. Uh, so I've been playing. Speaking of Resto, we played Dark Tower this weekend. Oh, nice. Dang, yeah. Restoration getting the, the plug. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, of all the people I gave up plug to, yeah, yeah, I like I like Resto yeah. a lot. So uh, we got the. It's funny because we got the expansion content, but then there was like a new player in the game, and I didn't really know how to like. Like, it's like you get the expansion content, and you're like, well, these characters are different, and they're a little bit strange sure. and they fit into the game in a weird way and like I don't know if I want to play with someone new while we're, while we're trying well I'm trying to figure that out so right. we end up just playing a base yeah, game yeah yeah do it regular and then I realized like halfway into the game I hadn't updated the app in years <laughs> anyway because sure. I don't I turned off auto update yeah, for yeah. apps because they're always changing their agreement yep. yeah so I was like ah, I'm, I'm done so I went and got I went and got the update so I'm ready I'm ready next time but I thought that was funny now so, that you're like somehow playing an old version but it's still fine <laughs> sure. it's so funny it's like I'm sure nothing happened you know didn't notice at all of course yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well I think you could have brought the new characters in, even because that would, and that's what I would have changed first. Anyways, bring the new characters in. Oh, sure, so sure. I didn't, I didn't, but there's new content. There's new buildings you can build. You can you can take out your, from my understanding, you can take out the building, the the four buildings in your kingdom. You can replace one of them with a new one, mm -hmm. and then it does. I assume it does whatever the old building did. Plus, it does whatever the new the new structure does. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so I haven't got to see that yet, but someday um, yeah. I've heard that. Yeah, I've been doing other co-ops too. The other one because you're right to be like I've been playing a lot of co-op because I also play it's the Elden. Is that why? Um, maybe it's yeah. the co -op. Everyone's together. I'm only playing co op right now. Sure. Yeah. No, yeah. I was I was playing the um, Deep Rock Galactic board game, um, <gasps> which is cool. How was it? It's cool. The, the board game's good. I had to... I backed it. Okay. <laughs> good. I'm sorry. I'm, I did I'm glad. No, no, I did it. I, I had to, like, actively tell myself not to, just because it's a lot of product. Uh, uh, what's that question towards me there? They're saying you sound like an owl. Oh, that's nice. That's pizza. I feel like there's a joke kind of following up. Yeah, on probably. Uh, so, uh, oh, uh, yeah, so good. I'm glad, I'm glad it's good. I, I, of course, you know, I, I couldn't resist. I went all in on the Oh, yeah, on, on no, the it's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, it's like... Um, you know, I've played the video game quite a bit. Yeah, you've played more of the video game than I have. I know. Yeah. I've only played a few hours. Um, but the video game is really good, too. Um, that's another company that I feel like they, uh, or at least like with the Deep Rock Galactic, they like know what they have. They're, they're very in tune with like what's cool about it, and they kind of just keep doing it. Um, and then they fund their company in such a weird and brilliant way that they just sell... Cosmetics? Yeah, I think so. And they'll keep reselling the game. Yeah. And they keep updating the content. And so I guess it's just on it's on you as the consumer to be like, well, I guess I want some cosmetics right. now. But um, I, it's only so fancy I can make my dwarf before I go. Eh, yeah, he's yeah. probably good for yeah. now. Good for a Saturday, <laughs> the new season hat or whatnot. Um, but no, the game's really cool. It does the um it's like scenario based, which I I liked how that was handled. Um mm -hmm. again, given how the video game is and stuff. I will say that certainly with the the expansion that was just on Kickstarter is yeah. As a person who has now put, you know, like eight or ten hours into the video game, I am like, oh, the expansion has like all the really cool extra yeah, yeah. biomes. It yeah, has yeah, the more yeah. than different mission types. Um, I wonder if they did the ghost. I don't know. Have you played a level with the no, ghost I don't in think it? So, so no. do you remember? Do you remember Final Fantasy Spirits Within, which was probably made before you were born? Yeah, no, no. Uh, so there was a, there was a Final Fantasy movie, and there was these the the plot of it. I'm spoiling a 30 year old movie here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, there's these the, like there's these ghosts that like can enter like all the Mako and stuff like that is to prevent like ghosts from entering the human civilization, sure. and then it turns out that the ghosts are like the rem they are ghosts. They're the remains of animals that the planet crashed into. Oh, that's cool. And so so they look really exotic and alien yeah. to them because they're from another biome yeah, completely. Yeah. So there's this insane and Door, in Door Fortress, there's levels that are haunted, and there's this ghost creature that looks like an, the ghost of an ape. That's cool. Chasing you through the level, and if you touch it, you start dying really fast, and that's all you can do. You, you can just, just, run, just away. run away from yeah. it. Yeah, so, and it's constantly stalking you. So. No, the, the vibes of that game are, I don't know, they, there's something, video games certainly recognize the... Uh, People really like just being like underground, digging a little hole. Like I'll say, like I was, I remember like four hours into it, I'm sitting there just like playing solo, just like dinking a wall with thing, and I'm like, what is wrong with me? Yes. I, why, why is my brain so into this? 
There's a, that, that crafting game, Mine Time and Porsche, a big part of the mining is that it's the same sort of like perfectly pixel, voxeled like environment where you can just tunnel, oh, yes, tunnel yes, through yes, anything yes, yes, yes. And, and, get, and get resources out of yeah. it. And I was like, I could just, this could be the whole game. And yeah. then I played Deep Rock and I'm like, this is the whole game. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. So I played that. Uh, I've been playing more Spirit Island. And then my daughter and I, I know that you bounced off a little bit, but we've been playing Tonsil Tussle. Oh, yeah. Um, I like Tonsil Tussle. It's just like it's just long for what it is. A it's little long, bit. It's, long it's really long for what it is. So I'm playing with my ten year old, and I love the like the concept that I was like, um, I we defeated one of the bosses last night. Mm-hmm. So we we're gonna play one rough. That's that's how we're doing it. We're leaving it doing each one. We're doing one rough in each session. Yeah, cool. So and, you play through all of them as the big boss. Yeah. yeah. And so then we beat a Bort, who's the guy who's like a tourist. Yeah. And, and <laughs> yep. doesn't know what's going on. Yep. And then I was flipping through the treasures. And it was like, Bort's camera, because he's a tourist. Yep. Bort's fanny pack, because he's a tourist. Bort's face. Sure. It's the last yeah, treasure yeah, you yeah. get from Bort. And I was like, well, I probably shouldn't have played this with my Take this one off to the side. Totally cool with it. Yeah, point, yeah. So. It's just a little, it's a mask. It's a mask. It's, it's a Mort mask. It's a, it's a look it's, like. Yeah, I think, I think they know where it came from. So, cool. All um, right, well, uh, yeah. Oh, wait, here, I have one more good, important question. Somebody asked if I ended up playing some goat slash Edison. I don't know who's asking. So that's the old... Um, Yu-Gi-Oh format that like when I was playing the game the most back in the day it was called Edison format and uh, I've repurchased me and me and one of my group of friends have repurchased essentially all of the collection of the decks from that era so that we can play Edison format whenever we want um, and I haven't played recently I bought stuff made a bunch of decks and now I'm like a goblin I have all of my Edison format stuff for whenever I want um, but if you're ever if anybody ever wants to play Edison format, you hit me up at a convention. I'll bring the stuff. You know, we can we can go down. <laughs> uh, for, before you leave your yeah. house, you better hit you up. Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, before yeah. you hit, go on, if you're going to be at PAX or something, bug me on Twitter if you want to play Edison. I will I will throw that out there. Yeah. Um, I'd love to. Kyle and, I, Kyle and I always plan to play Dungeon Bowl or Blood Bowl yeah. at conventions, and then every, yeah, every never. Time, every time I punk out because I'm just like yeah. I don't want Kyle. I don't want you to transport your miniatures on a plane. I like. Too many cords have fallen out of bags. So. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's... Uh, let's keep on... Let's, let's talk about Ahoy. Let's talk about Ahoy. The main reason we're here is to yeah. talk about Ahoy today. Um, yeah, do we wish... Let's, uh, let's switch to the top-down cam, if we can, so we can show everybody what our table looks like. <gasps> Look at all of this Ahoy content. My goodness. All right. Um, so, what's, yeah, so what's going on here? Um, Tell me all about it. So this is, what you're looking at here is all of the currently in development uh, Ahoy expansion content. Uh-huh. Uh, this is for all new factions for Ahoy. I'll get my hands out of frame even. Oh, here, I'm going to bring this over. Show everybody. Um, so this would cost at least $200, right? At least $200. But, but we're not going to sell it for a far yeah, better deal yeah. than that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, what you see here is a, uh, a new alternate um, what I like to just kind of simply in development refer to as like the blue faction, um, mm. just because that's the position they sit in. Or and frankly, I'm cribbing off of the vast <laughs> with the yellow and the red thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easiest to easiest to talk about them that way with yeah. the color sometimes. So you have your an alternate blue role. Uh, this is the Blackfish Brigade, an army of orcas. Mm-hmm. Um, you have an alternate Mollusk Union, the Shellfire Rebellion, mm-hmm. uh, who are a band of yellow rebellion turtles. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the latest ones we have are the Coral Cap Pirates, mm-hmm. who are a you know, you kind of start out as a single vessel captain mm-hmm. trying to raise as much of a fleet as you can. Mm-hmm. And then we have the over here the Leviathan, um, who is a giant sea monster whose goal is to eat as many of pretty much anything in the game that he can. Mm-hmm. Um, he's happy to devour patrols. He's happy to fight comrades. He'll even eat crew from the market if he can mm-hmm. um, to try to become as big as possible to, uh, to get out onto the map here. Um, we'll so are the Coral Cap Pirates really into new wave, like 80s techno new wave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's their main thing. Yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. The, uh, with the aesthetic. With the, with, the, with the pink and blue. The Miami Vice kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I'm, I'm into it. Um, so, 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 yeah, so let's... Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm going to kind of run through how well, these are all working here. Them a little bit, yeah. yeah. So um, the Blackfish Brigade, um, one of the, the biggest things I learned, and you'll be able to read more about this um, in some design diaries that will be posted 
soon in the future. Uh, we'll be yeah, marketing those and whatnot. But uh, Blackfish Brigade is, like I said, an alternate to the Bluefin Squadron. So one of the big things that they have to be able to do is put patrols out under the map. Okay. Patrols are how they compete in that competition versus the comrades, so okay. they need to have that. Um, the big difference is that they don't get patrols for free, kind of how the other faction did. The old faction would sail around, put out a patrol, sail around, put out a patrol. Um, the new faction has a bit more of a focus on the die puzzle. So for sail, for example, you'll see that whenever they sail, they need to assign a die that's higher than the last one they assigned. Mm -hmm. The reward that they get for doing that is whenever they assign a die to sail, they're going to get to add a patrol to the whale pod. Mm -hmm. um, the whale pod... Which I'll now do. Yes. Right. Boom. Is this new piece you'll see on the map here. Uh, and it goes around the uh, value die of a region. Mm -hmm. And this indicates where this whale pod is right now. Mm -hmm. Then, on a future action, the uh, blue f or blackfish would be able to move the whale pod, migrating it around the map, and any time it migrates, it'll be able to drop patrols. Mm -hmm. Boosh, boosh. Putting these out onto the map. Yep. And you always have to match the position mm -hmm. within the whale pod to the position on the map. So there's a big... Um, these are much thinkier factions, yeah. I would say, than the, the base ones. Um, a lot more you know, kind of triangulating two or three parts even to kind of get your core action to happen. Mm. Um, and so what happens if you have the Blackfish Brigade and the Bluefin Squadron in the same game? Uh, you will be, you'll replace one of them. Into okay. it. So it's always okay. going to be either the Blackfish Brigade or the Bluefin Squadron okay. playing as one of the large militaries putting out those patrols onto the map. So um, they'll never compete. They will never compete for yeah, against right. each other. They're, they're both... On the military side, they're both happy as long as things are in control. As long as there's no comrades, they are both happy, so they would never fight with each other. Um, so then, for example, they still need a way to clean up all the comrades on the map. Yes. So this is their core enemy, is anything that does comrades. Um, so let's say they could sail over to here into this space, and then they could assign a four to their surge. Um, this is the equivalent of their bombard, their very strong action. This is what happens to me yep. every time. They can target uh, any patrol on the map here, so they would target this one all the way over here as long as it's in a straight line. Yep. And they surge across the map over to here, removing any comrades that are on islands along the way. So they're going to remove all four of these comrades from both of these islands. But not from the launcher. Not from the launcher, yeah. The, uh, these guys are safe on board of this boat. And they okay. will stay there right now. Um, right. So you'll see already one of the big differences is this faction is capable of removing mm -hmm. um, from multiple islands with a singular action. Mm -hmm. But the means to do so is a little bit more difficult. Your right. um, sailing is a less powerful action for this faction, and mm -hmm. it's much more about surging and migrating to kind of maintain your control. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how they work. And what's the migration? Uh, migration is the way that they will continue to move the pot around. Mm -hmm. So now, let's say after you've done this, you want to get a you know a patrol over here or something so that you can you know surge in the future. You'll want to load up patrols into the thing that you could migrate it over to mm -hmm. here, perhaps going like this and mm -hmm. like this. Now you set yourself up for next turn where you could again sail over to here, surge across the map again. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need to remove comrades in yeah. order to surge. So there's times. Move. Yeah, you can even use it just to move sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, it's sometimes more efficient than taking just a basic move action. So uh, there's a little bit more of a um, strategic layer here, I yes. think, because. Yes. You can focus on loading up the whale pod to get as much as you can out of yeah. migration. Or you can be like, well, I kind of need to migrate now to, yeah. to, to, to solve some problems I have right yeah, now. No, there's, yeah, there's times where um, initial instinct will say um, that you want to fill up the pod as much as possible. I got it, yeah. yeah. Um, but you will, you'll find quickly that sometimes it is so much more about getting just that one uh, pod exactly to where you need or that one patrol. Um, I did see somebody ask if you take damage for wreckages while surging, and you do. Um, so that's something that is uh, one of the downsides of it. You, know, you, right. you tear through the map extra fast, you are going to damage your ship along the way. Um, that's kind of how they're working right now. Um, development for them has been going really well. I'm super happy with how this faction works. Yeah, they haven't really changed much, have they? No, no, they've, been, they've yeah. been pretty solid lately. Um, yep. Like I said, it's just a, I think a, a thinky kind of powerhouse of a faction um, is kind of their main thing. Cool. Well, um, let's hear about yellow then. Or, yeah, or, no, no, we'll do yellow next. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. No, we yeah. should do yellow next. So the your counterpart there, uh -huh. you know, the the Joker to their Batman is the Shellfire Rebellion. Um, so the big difference here that's new for them, they have four dice, just like a normal faction, mm -hmm. um, but they also have a fifth die, uh, not a fifth action die, like uh -huh. the uh, large military factions. This is a D6 labeled one, two, two, three, three, four. That's a very vexing die. Oh, it's the worst. It's yeah. the worst die. It may be the worst die in one of our games yet. Yes. We keep making worse dice. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> so this one will, um, this is called your range die. Yeah. So at the beginning of the round, you're going to roll all of your dice. You'll roll your range die with it. And this is going to determine how far you are able to launch mm -hmm. your shell-fired mm -hmm. um, guys. So because they're turtles, you know, they have sturdy shells, um, they're capable of being launched large distances to arrive at the island. Much like real to, turtles. Much like real turtles. Yeah. You can just throw them at large, large distances if need. Please don't um, real turtles. So <laughs> then um, they still have uh, comrades, just like the other factions. Um, right now we're just using the base game comrades. You will get uh, comrades with unique stickers mm -hmm. when you buy your expansion factions. I didn't know that. You will, yeah. Well, I didn't they'll sign have up for little that. Turtles on it. All right. Maybe they'll have, maybe they'll be told, maybe they'll have turtles in the shells and turtles outside Ooh. of the shells. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, um, now their main goal then is at the end of every turn, they're going to get to launch for free. So yeah. it saves um, a lot of their action economy um, is being saved on rather than needing to spend actions to spend guys out. It's so much about position. Uh -huh. um, and one of the large things for position then that's neat is when they launch, um, they have to launch in a straight line. They can't curve it around anything. Right. But they can go over sandbars or over gaps in the map. Mm -hmm. So it makes them a little bit different than um, some of the movement of the blackfish. So for example... So you're telling me if this existed, I'd still be able to launch over this whole gap here. Yeah, and even like, here's uh, this one right here, even if I, let's now, say... Now obviously this is an illegal board position. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. Bermuda Triangle of it. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, you can do for it. For this right. one, if, for example, yeah, because you, um, your launchers as well as your flagship can all launch. Yeah. So this flagship, for example, could sail over to here, and now it is, including this gap in the map, one, two, three spaces away from this island. So they could take any number of comrades from their flagship and launch them onto that island over there. Um, so it's giving, again, this, this large, um, yes, the gap does count as a space. Um, and yeah, it gives this much, there's, there's kind of these like hot spots on the map that yeah. change now every turn depending on what your range die is. Right. Um, of course, they still have a, a deck of cards, um, like the base Mollusk Union. Um, the cards are different. Um, a few of them, I think, are similar. They also have an enlist card. Um, but these cards will allow them to build more launchers on the map, go and hide in fog. Um, no more dynamic their... entry, though. No more dynamic entry, yeah. no. The dynamic entry is unique to the uh, to the Mollusk Union. Um, so, what I like about them, if I may, yeah, please. is uh, last time we I played... I like being complimented. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, we, we accidentally kind of created this like little backwater on the map yeah. with, with winds and sandbars. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm just to completely infect this area and then go out beyond yeah. it and then start competing. But I was like, this is a cool strategic moment because I could have gone, I could have been like, I'll just secure this, do a little bit and then move out yeah. uh, and kind of fight for the, for the map. But instead I created this little turtle Shangri-La and then started expanding out of it. I think both of these factions really highlight how much, um, they're both so positional. So mm. the map gets even more character. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was the expansion content um, than the... Uh, than the base game, because you do have moments where, because the factions are movement-based, range-based, um, certain areas can be so much harder to traverse suddenly. Mm -hmm. uh, is this a board game? Yes. You know who that is. I know who that is. Yeah, I know, I know. know. This ignorance. Just, uh, is it up to the exact amount that can be launched? Yes. So it is exact range that needs yep. to be launched, too. So at range three, um, yeah, a higher number on your range is not better, necessarily. It is just a different issue to deal with. Once you play that once or twice, though, it's like you look at the die and you, and you grouse about it. You're like, yep. damn it. And then you're like, okay, no, I got it. There's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, but it's always it's just kind of that moving goalpost of how it's going to work. Um, so that's yep. them. So still putting out... Um, Comrades onto the map and things like that, so that these factions still both of these work, um, you know, with no changes to the base game rules or anything required. You know, the all the base game cards work. They work with the smuggler. Yeah. You can just swap them in any way you'd like. Um, so then going this on. This is to, already eighty dollars of value. Um, we keep going. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, so going up to the um, now what I'll kind of call the third party factions is what mm -hmm. I've been referring to them lately. Um, because they just exist in any time when there's a three or higher players, right. you're going to need at least one third-party faction and three-player, two and a four-player four player game. Um, so the first one is the Coral Cat Pirates. Um, this is the newest one to the public that they've seen. Um, this one's yeah. been internal testing and whatnot a little bit, um, but I haven't talked about this much with you guys. So their main gimmick is, again, they start the game as just one little pink ship, yep. uh, and their goal is to raise this whole fleet of ships they have. And you'll see they have uh, one ship for each suit in the game. Yeah. And at the beginning of the game, they're going to kind of look at the market, see who's available, and their goal, initial goal, first arc of the game, is to hire captains for uh -huh. their boats. Uh -huh. So for example, if I'm hanging out here with my pink boat, I could sail over to this red island for one of my dice. I could now hire this gunner 
for another one of my dice. Yeah. And instead of taking him as crew, which is recruiting, I can hire him as the captain of the boat, the Spectre, uh -huh. which is a card that I have. I can take him, add him as the captain of the Spectre now. He loses his ability, but he gains the ability of the boat. Sure. So each boat has a unique ability that will allow it to um, score points as well as increase the region value. Sure. sure. Um, so whenever I hire a person, you'll get some fame for that. So yeah. since this guy was, you know, he was expensive, he costs a die, I'll get three extra fame. Good. And then I will increase the region value boop, 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 for the other factions to care about. Right. And then I'll put the Spectre onto the map. Okay. Lovely. Now, the Spectre, yeah. he's not done. Yeah. He's a, he's a boat who has his own jobs, he has his own wants, and he's going to score at the end of the game now for essentially how stacked up his crew is, how, how much was he able to fulfill all of the jobs needed for that boat. Mm. So at the bottom of the card, you'll see that he wants to find a yellow card to be a swashbuckler, a purple card to be a barber, and a blue card to be a cannoneer. Did you have to do this in order? You do not need to do them in order, but you are mm. only going to score for um, the if you have all of the ones to the yeah, left yeah. of it. Yep. yep. So if you grab the cannoneer, uh, cool, great, but you're not going to get four points unless you have picked up the barber and the swashbuckler mm. as well. And then on their player board, they kind of have these scaling movement actions. So the big one that they have is Parade. Mm -hmm. um, it allows you to assign a 1 to a 4. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it the number that you assigned is how many ships you're going to get to sail with every mm -hmm. turn. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to be parading with just one boat. That's mm -hmm. fine. But now I can assign the parade with my 3. Now I can move this boat over to here. I can move this boat over to here and start exploring these ones. Now my red boat is at the yellow island with the yellow ship right. And look at that. I can now... The red boat can sure. pick up the yellow guy, and now I've got my swashbuckler for end game scoring. So yeah. I'm gonna get a point for that boat at the end. If I can get all of these, I'll score seven more points for that boat at the end of the game. Cool. A little uh, drag on me is that um, any damage on any of my pieces is gonna be minus one point at the end of the game. Mm. So I'm gonna be moving around the map very efficiently. My, my goal is essentially to go everywhere, but there's all this dang wreckage in the way, right? Um, which is a huge problem for them. So that's kind of their, their main thing, and you'll see that you know depending on it's really rare you're going to get, you know, four more um, boats in play even, honestly. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot about, you know, determining which ones in the market are you going to be taking on for captains, which ones are you going to be taking for crew, because really quickly you can see, like, if I have two of these boats built, I'm like, well, I could take the orange guy to hire him as another captain and increase my ability to take cards, but I actually need the orange card for two different of my sets right. to complete. Um, so a really neat puzzle. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with how this one shook out so far. Yeah, that's super cool. And can you sink the little boats? You cannot sink the little boats. No. Nope. You can, yeah, uh, you can, yeah, you yeah no, you can, you can damage them up, um, and you will lose points at the end of the game, but there is currently that's not a way to sink gets. them. Yeah. And so they can't really, how, are they able to end the game? Um, yeah, so they can, I'd say, um, if they ended the game on their four, on their full 30 points, much like the Smuggler, you probably have They're lost gonna wreck, because yeah, that end yeah. game scoring is going to push them over the, over the edge. Um, yes. That's some queer scoring there where, like, they're so negative. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, in general, they won't be the one to end the game, I'd yeah. say. Um, but the big things that, um, that they do to that are so critical is that they have that that similar kind of organic growth to the map. Um, mm. They're going to be increasing the region values almost like agnostic of what these two players are doing. Right. Um, they have their own goals that are so oriented around the market and the islands right. that they're able to, it's a, uh, it's a lot of a, it's a logistics puzzle. Right. I think that they're, they're the most logistical faction of any of them right now. Cool. And then someone asked, uh, can the pink vote only hire where they are? Which I Yes, only where they are. Yep. Where so that's, that's why you now, you now have this like string of multiple ships that have demands and you're trying to make all of them work with inter individual movements um, you do have some actions that will allow you to like swap the positions of two boats or right. one of the boats for example the wayfinder at the beginning of your turn can always pull a boat to its position right um but yeah it's all about you know how can you how can you satiate every ship as much as possible essentially that's very cool yeah um all the, right. the final one here is the leviathan um, so the Leviathan is, uh, they are a giant snake, and they're essentially kind of playing giant snake, uh, to put it the most simply. Um, at the beginning of every turn, they have, well, they have three stats. That's the big thing. So they have speed, size, and fangs. Um, you know, the three stats of any giant monster. Um, and their goal is essentially at the beginning of every turn, they're going to move equal to their speed, and they're going to place any available body pieces that they have. Sure. Um, Problems are that they can't enter any spaces where they have pieces. Okay. Um, so right now, much I'm fine. Like snake. Much like Snake. If you run into yourself, game over. <laughs> so at the beginning of this turn, for example, I could you know, sail here, sail here, or not sail, sorry, just move. Uh, and I would put two of my body sections. This is yeah. great. 
Um, now, if I'm out of body sections, um, next turn, if I move again, I'm not going to drop any body, which uh -huh. is not good for me because I score points for every body section I have on the map. Right. So my goal is to put these everywhere that I can without needing to waste time essentially double backing ever right. on myself. Um, along the way, though, the way that you'll actually gain those body sections or continue to maintain kind of your economy is by devouring or striking. Mm -hmm. So striking, for example, you can assign a 1 to 3, and these giant heads will actually attack at a range equal to the die assigned. Um, and since it's like a big snake, that thing like can hook corners and whatnot. So, you know, three away for this guy can, you know, he can go one, two, three. He could hit this flagship all the way over here even. Mm -hmm. um, once he does that, he's able to gain body sections equal to the size of his fangs. Cool. So it's a reason to kind of keep increasing that stat. Mm -hmm. um, as well as that, he has um, some evolutions he can uh, potentially gain. So throughout the game, he'll be, uh, he has an appetite that he wants to satiate, and he can satiate that by eating the appropriate crew off of the right islands. Right. Um, he has the potential to gain an extra head if he eats one of the, the red uh, comrades or uh, crew, uh, mm -hmm. or he becomes sturdy by eating one of the large blue ones. Uh, he also has the ability to uh, like bide his time and kind of discard these and gain points that way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's more about... Um, it's much more of the, this is the faction that feels the most like he almost doesn't care what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. He's a big sea monster, and he's going to eat his stuff, and he's going to keep on keeping on. Mm -hmm. um, the the problem that he poses for the other players, or I guess upside, is the double-edged sword, really, is that um, anywhere where his pieces are will score plus one fame at the end of the region. Mm -hmm. So both the yellow player and the blue player have an interest to be with him, um, but the downside is that the... Uh, the green player simply feeds on them to keep going with his goal. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't increase for each piece that's in the region, so there's also good arguments sometimes to potentially try to, you know, if I know you're controlling this region, mm -hmm. I might want to just kill this green piece just to reduce the amount. I don't. I, maybe I can't take control of it entirely, mm -hmm. but now I could instead just kill this green piece and knock one point off of you. Sure. So it's kind of a new layer to the uh, that area control thing where you can now mitigate even if the point is going to happen or not. Happen or not, yeah. yeah. And how do they fight? Um, with striking, so they don't have cannons, uh -huh. so they will never, like, if you sail into them, they're never going to instantly fight you or anything. Right. Only, they will only ever actively attack, and that's with a, uh, a one, two, a three, they can attack from any one of their heads. Mm -hmm. And later on in the game, you know, you might find yourself backed into a corner, or you can't explore, or, you know, you're, you're just stuck. Um, you actually have the ability to spawn more heads later on, which will give you again now, you know, mm. kind of a, a way to get out of get out of dodge if you need to. Now you have all this area of the map to waste again on those moves that you need to, or on you know devouring these patrols or comrades. I mean, so is it like a Leviathan family, or is it? I or, or one creature. Nobody knows what goes on underneath that water. Oh, that's, that's my bad. thought right now. I think I think like it's it, it is it is such a large beast mm -hmm. that goes so deep under the water that there's not it's not even known. There's, there might just be a gigantic creature down there exactly. with many heads. Yeah, on exactly, exactly. Or, exactly. or it could be a family. It might be multiple. We mm -hmm. don't know. We, we can't perceive that. So are we gonna do an octopus in a hallway three? An octopus, dude. I was so man. Like dude, little tentacles poking up. I'm, out I'm not against yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The other two giant sea monsters that were like on the on the ideas board were obviously giant octopus thing, and then a uh, giant crab. Oh sure. Had, yeah. had to try for a giant it crab. Has that claws going yeah, through the exactly. water. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't see me making claws, but it was like a thing going through the water. Yeah. <laughs> he could like only move. He would like have to like. <laughs> It was like he could like only move left or right, and then it would like turn, and then to go the other direction because nice. yeah, crabs could only walk sideways. Um, so yeah, that's um, that, that's what I was shaking up to be. And yes, I saw the question. Um, any uh, Leviathan piece will increase the region value, so it doesn't need to be my head. It doesn't need to be yeah. you know, just anything there will increase the uh, scoring for it. And at the end of my for, for my scoring, the reason I actually care is. I'm going to score for every single body piece on the map, just period. Mm -hmm. So I have one goal. It has become huge and take up as much space as possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty, pretty central goal. It's the only thing he cares about. Um, and they care a lot about then, like, where are they actually going to be spilling those points out into the map then? Because you need to make sure that you remain in positions to keep growing so you can actually close out the game end there. Um, this one doesn't have an end game scoring or anything like that. He does... Um, does have the capacity to just you know close out the game on a, a kind of regular end of round scoring. Sure. Yeah. It's funny, it kind of messes with my meta for the blue and the yellow because I when I play blue I just look at the regions and put them in order from least to best mm -hmm. and take all the least or I'll take all the best. Right, 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 sure. Yep. And and then I work my way down or up. And uh, now with him changing the value of the regions, 
that can go down again, it's it's gonna mess with me. So, but I'll I'll make a new meta. Don't worry, or, don't Come worry, internet. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is this is the like current shape of all of the Ahoy expansion content. Fantastic. And the other thrilling news. Yeah. Is that go we're, we're going to be putting this on backer kit? Yes. Um, all of this content is going to be available November. 14th. November 14th. We will be launching a backer kit campaign. Yeah. Um, I know we have the links for that already. You know, we have a, a landing page for it already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but now we have the landing page and everything already, but that is the official date. Um, and, if guys, I, and if I want to read more, yeah. soon there will be some content on BDG. Yep. I yeah. have a I have an article that I am finishing up, putting the just the final touches on, um, and that will be ready for you guys soon. It has, it'll be about the um, Blackfish Brigade. Uh, yeah. It has a ton of the uh, it's like the whole tale of deciding to of like how we came to expand Ahoy. It was like it, it was started started to be a pretty brief yeah one, and then that's why I was ready. I was like halfway through, and I'm like, I haven't even like got to the faction yet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, this is gonna be. I you're gonna ask me to write one for Block, and I'm gonna be like, ah, mm -hmm. it's all over. Let's, yeah. We'll see how we do. So but yeah, I, cool. yeah. I think the um some of the like highlights I think of having all this new content. Um, I did the math the other day. There's there used to be only be four player combinations for Hawaii. There's not with all of this concept. There's now thirty two player Whoa, combinations. That's cool. Of ways you can play the game. Um, I know. Can I still play two smuggler? You cannot play two smuggler. Oh yes, yes, of course. Sorry, in a four player game, yes, yes. two, yes, okay. of course. That's yes. all I want. Yeah, every game mode in the past is still legal. None okay. of those ones are illegal. Um, and yeah, I mean the the ways to experience Ahoy are going to just explode uh, yeah. with this expansion. Really, um, I think it'll be a, a whole new way for people to sink their teeth into it. I think all these factions have uh, a bit more nuance, a little bit more to a think about, a little bit more puzzle, a little yeah. bit more puzzle, a little yeah. more think about. And I do think um, I think that'll be exciting for people who played a lot of the base game and thought or saw like oh, I just feel like I can't win as this one, or I feel like mm -hmm. you kind of can't get it done. I think that. Um, seeing how much more space there is in the design will even maybe show people how much mm -hmm. other strategic angles there are in the base game. So yeah. I'm really excited for that. You will not be able to do well, six, players, six players with two smugglers. Two smugglers. No, that's yeah. a, fan, a fan variant of we're, some we're sort, surely. Four. I yeah. think we just run out of deck. Yeah, yeah. It gets Five player gets really weird for a lot of reasons. But yeah, so yeah, this does remain a two to four player game, yep. with, with even with all the expansion content. Cool. But yeah, I... Uh, well, thanks a lot, Nick. Yeah, I look forward to uh, to sharing more with you guys really soon. Yeah. Please go follow the Backer Kit page. Um, follow us on, you know, look at all of our BGG pages and all that stuff. There will be one soon. I need to play as Pirates. Because yeah, the Pirates I, I want to know how it feels when I'm changing the cards together because I, I watch them play and I don't... I'm not, I'm not experiencing that, but... The Pirates are very cool, I think. Oh, I didn't know we were going back up to this camera. Wow. <laughs> all, all right, everybody. That's it. That's it for today. I think, right? Yeah, that's we'll, it. We're just real quick. Yep. Please, uh, please stay, stay tuned. Keep uh, stay on our socials, and uh, see you later. Yeah. Bye bye.